Okay, and uh, here we are with our interview of the day, and uh, today we're going down into Zanzi. I got them Zanzi Queen in the building, Miss Namin. Nadia Nakai, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, you're looking real cold right there. I'm cozy, I'm in my house, you know, we're not allowed to move around, so <laughs> you look great also. Great. Uh, uh, lovely to have you joining us here in Uganda uh, for the first time. Yeah. Now, you know, when I see somebody like Nadia Nakai, I think maybe she can afford a plane ticket or a bus ticket to Uganda. So I need to know why you ain't been here before, girl. Why are you guys not booking me? Why don't you guys bring me over? <laughs> this is actually your fault. Why are you guys oh, not that's... booking me? <laughs> <laughs> You got That's the problem. Me. How am I supposed to come to Uganda and know nobody? At least now I know you. Can I stay at your house? Oh Where am God. I going to stay? <laughs> you know what? This is why this relationship is never going to work. You blame me for everything. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, we're certainly going to work on uh, on having Nadia come over. Um, all right, let's start it off with some introductions to everybody who's watching and thinking, okay, I've seen it somewhere. I might have heard it somewhere. Take it away, Nadia. Hi guys, so my name is Nadia Nakai. I am a rapper based in South Africa, but originally from Zimbabwe. I do consider myself an African rap queen. Um, I've worked with the likes of Ice Prince of the, to my new single, Vic Mensa, who's coming from um, Chicago. Um, I've just dropped my album, Nadia Naked too. <laughs> so go get that. Um, you know what's interesting uh, is that you, you know, going through your personal, um, uh, uh, your, your professional work, is that it took you a while to come out with an album. You know, you, you started off dropping great music back in 2013, and it took until 2019 for, for music to come out, a proper album to come out from Nadia. Uh, that was Nadia Naked. Why, why did it take so long? Um, to be honest with you, I've worked on three albums. Like, this is probably the fourth album that actually came out. The other albums just never came out because they weren't good enough. I honestly had to, I, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself as an artist and I know the standards that I wanted for it to come out. And um, Nadia Naked was the one where I could say, this is the level that I want to come out with as my debut, you know? So we had been working on projects, but it was just never the right time. All right, cool. Um, uh, collabos, collabos, collabos. You seem to learn some of the best collabos in Africa, uh, you know, from, from down in, in South Africa. You know, Ricky, uh, you've got uh, Ice Prince. Obviously, you've got uh, the man himself, Casper. Um, you really like the collabos. Do they come to you or you go after them? How does it work? Um, it, it definitely depends because um, sometimes a song can come to you with the collaboration already on it. But more often than not, especially with this Nadia Naked project, because it was such a personal project, the people that I called in for features had a really sentimental thing to me and our relationship, as well as sentimental to have them on that specific song for a specific reason. Um, yeah, so it's everyone that I've worked with are people that I generally have a good relationship with. All right, cool stuff. Um, uh... You tell us a little bit about uh, Family Tree, um, uh, working with them and joining the label. Um, first time we're talking, so take us back to that. To when I joined the label? Yes, Family Tree. Sorry, you, you lo I lost you there. What did you say? Family Tree. You're part of Family Tree, right? Yes. Taking us back um, to joining them and working with them. What's the question, my dear? Sorry, can you tell us a little bit about, one, joining Family Tree and also working with them? Oh, okay. Well, I'm assuming you're saying how I ended up joining Family Tree would be um, there's an ex-manager of mine from Varsity named Bash Vision. He used to manage me years ago, and we parted ways. Years later, he ended up being Casper Nervis photographer and DJ, and he was part of Family Tree. And then when we reconnected years later, he was like, yo... There's this opportunity for you to join Family Tree, Casper, and everybody else is very interested in you. What do you think? And I was like, definitely. So in 2016, I signed to Family Tree and we came out with my single, Money Back, which is my debut single coming out with Family Tree. All right, cool. Um, before we get into the album of the day, uh, we talk about what you've been up to. Uh, you know, it's pretty much been a lockdown for everybody. Um, yeah. Um, you, you've been kicking it back at home in studio, cooking, making love. What's been going on? <laughs> Everything of all those sorts. <laughs> I've been cooking. 
I've been chilling, I've been working out, I've been trying to like upskill myself, like, you know, learning how to edit videos, learning how to take videos, learning how to lay my own edges on my lace wigs, teaching myself how to make, do my makeup properly, stuff like that has been, it's honestly been a lot of like self-equipped, self-equipping or self-educating, you know, a lot of the stuff I used to pay people to do for me, but now I've been able to, to acquire those skills by myself, which is quite exciting. Yeah. You know, um, uh, the general population, not a lot of people have been going through some very dark times, been very tough for them, uh, you know, just getting through this period. Um, yeah. did, you, did you find yourself also going into, like, patches that had dark clouds and you're like, man, man, man. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, I think all of us have, have felt levels of depression. I know for a fact the whole continent, I think, is dealing with anxiety because we've a lot of us have never gone through such a crazy, hectic pandemic like this, you know? This is our big story of our generation. And yeah. we don't know how to deal with it. I don't think we know how to deal with it. We don't know where, what, what's going to happen next. Honestly, at the beginning, it started out like it was a joke, like it wasn't real. And then it yeah. became so real and so serious so quickly. And it affected our livelihoods. It affected how we even communicate with our own families, you know? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety but i'm happy that sorry sorry i got a phone call i'm oh, sorry about that i'm happy are you still there um i'm happy that i had people around like that i locked down with i went into the lockdown with my best friend who was living with me so at least i wasn't completely isolated or completely alone but i know a lot of people were <coughs> ah relax <laughs> <laughs> Mama, where my mouth at? Mama? Oh my god. <laughs> People can't even cough in peace now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I you know, uh, I, <laughs> so, <Woo>! um, uh, <laughs> talking about the, the industry in, in, in down in South Africa, and I think around the world, even right here in hmm. Uganda, like, you know. Uh, artists have been crying their asses off trying to get back to work. I know there's yeah. been a particular drive in um, Zanzi for, you know, um, calling out the government to kind of open up the bars in the entertainment industry. Tell us about that. It's been pretty vocal. You people have been very vocal about it, huh? Yeah, so in Durban, they actually had a whole protest with the hashtag Bula President, which means open the country president. Um, we recently got taken down to level two, but... It feels like every other industry is being opened except the entertainment industry. Events are still not allowed to happen. Clubs are not allowed to open up. But restaurants are allowed to open up to a certain time. Alcohol is now permitted to be sold again. Cigarettes are being permitted to be sold again. So the entertainment industry hasn't benefited a lot from, from the grants okay. that have been announced and stuff like that. There's not a lot of... I don't, we don't know who's actually benefiting from it. And on top of that, the entertainment sector is the industry that people are relying on during the lockdown. When you're locked up yeah. at home, you're relying on listening to music, movies, everything that we do. But now we're not being looked after. So there's that concern. And they were having a protest in Durban. There, were, there was a whole hamus going on there. Yes, I think the point of it is definitely valid, but maybe the execution might have not been a completely legal. But I understand that there's frustration right now on my sector specifically. And um, on the other hand, it's not just about opening up the country, but we also have to find ways to open it up safely because eventing has a lot of people. You don't want to get the numbers up completely. I mean, because it affects the 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 infrastructure of hospitals and and stuff like that that can actually cater to the sick um if the numbers keep growing so we have to also figure out and sit down and figure out how we can actually do it safely um you know a as a musician you know who has whose office has been closed that's the bars the restaurants the concerts and everything uh, have you been looking at your bank account your your, your statements of late and you're like man I'm missing a couple of zeros here. I like oh, of going course. On here? <laughs> of course. All of us have taken such a huge knock. Because I mean, compared to gigging like four, five, six times a weekend to absolutely nothing for five months, it's it's actually very quite hectic and it's scary. And you know, and it also teaches you as an artist to to really focus on what's important because a lot of the things that that we have in our lives is purely for stunting purposes, but not for necessity purposes. I don't need two cars. Why do I have two cars? 
So now you start to think, you start to think, okay, what is the smartest way that I need to use my money? Because if this happens again to me, I can't be in this situation again, you know? I mean, lucky for me, I've got multiple revenue streams. So I don't only rely on performing alone. <laughs> but there's a lot of artists, there's a lot of DJs that only rely on the gigs that they're getting each weekend to survive, you know? And it's it's very scary. It's very, it's very scary, it's very daunting, but it's also a learning curve to understand as musicians in South Africa. I don't know how it is in, in the rest of Africa, but in South Africa, we need to really start thinking about how we're saving our money, how we're investing our money, how we're using our money on a daily to day to day basis. The people that we've hired in our lives, do we really need them? Just kind of like readapting our to, uh, according to what this pandemic did to us. God forbid. Should the industry shut down forever, uh, I need three hustles that uh, Nadia Nakai just might take up should music just collapse. Okay. The first being, the third, rather. The third would, I'd probably become um, a, a lace wig installer. I'd probably, like, do hair. <laughs> That'd be true. The, num the number two, I would be a fashion designer. Okay. Number three. Then number three would be, I have a degree in marketing, media studies, and communication. So I'd probably go back to corporate. <laughs> I'd okay. probably go back and get a day job. <laughs> I, I personally, I don't know about the, the, the fashion designer part. For somebody who is naked all the time, well, I'm, you know. Well, I have a fashion range. <laughs> don't you know my fashion range? It's in stores. I'm I just bought some Never castle. mind. <laughs> I'm already doing um, this. <laughs> let's, let's talk a new album. Uh, new album out, Nadia Naked uh, 2. Why two? Is it a continuation of part one? Yes. Why two? It's a continuation of part one. So the part one songs are still in um, part two. I've just added five more songs. So it's like a deluxe version or an extended version of Nadia Naked. Okay. A um, couple of features on this one as well. Tell us about um, the songs and uh, the collaboration. The songs. Okay. So I've added five songs. So um, I've added a song called Rider. I've added a song called Addicted. I've added a song called um, Head Off. And I've added a song called Practice featuring Vic Mensa and then the Practice Remix featuring a local artist from Durban called Luca Price. So, yeah. Any, any one in particular, um, you know, the artists usually have one in particular that speaks to them. Is there any one in particular that is, you know, Nadia, that's my song. That's my song on the album. Well, to, to pers personally to me. Yeah. Honestly, it had always been Ryder. Like, the, one of the songs was for me was Ryder. When I released it, it's actually the least favorite. <laughs> the most favorite is Addicted. And Addicted wasn't the one I even thought was going to get attention. But everybody's talking about Addicted. And I'm, I have to rethink. And maybe maybe I need to shoot for Addicted now. Because everyone is talking about that one. So, yeah. But for me, it was Ryder. But that's like, <laughs> people don't even talk about it. <laughs> looking, looking back in history, as you wrap it up, looking back in history, is there one in particular that... that you probably never liked or never felt so much that became a hit or one that you loved so much that ne never became a hit? Anything like that? Um, let me think. Hold on, let me think. That's a good question. Because I'm honestly, I don't know if it became a hit, but I became known a lot for the song. It was called Like Me. But I, I think it's because it was like my first off, one of my first offerings. I hate that song till this day. Like even brands like there's a brand that wanted to use it for a tv ad and i was like please no not this song like <laughs> can you just remove the song from my catalog i don't actually want this song anymore that's definitely like me like that's the one um the one and then the one that became a wait that is that i would, thought was a hit but didn't become a hit i think um was i'm a boss people know i'm a boss but it didn't become a hit like namin i thought it would have been like you know on that level of of hitness but it's actually more drugs that's actually on the level of surpassing Namin actually now. So more drugs is the one that I didn't expect at all. And that one is the she become that's the reason why I've gone gold. It's my plaque. <laughs> it is what it is. Listen up. Um, it is Woman Crush Wednesday as well. So we'd love you to um, you know, shout out the ladies out there, quite a number of female MCs and just, you know, the ladies in particular, give them some great inspirational advice. You know, I might as well slide out of this video. You talk to the girl, talk to the girl. Okay, cool. Hey, what's up, girls? I just want to give you a big shout out. I want you guys to know that there is space for us in hip hop. You don't need to compromise your values in order to get in. Hard work and dedication is the only key that you need to get through the door. So shout out to you guys. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You know, the ladies are taking over globally and Africa and South Africa and Uganda everywhere. We're just taking over. <laughs>
It is what it is. We can't say goodbye without a freestyle from you. Give us a little freestyle. No, no, no. Sorry, don't do that. Bye. <laughs>